Okay, I don't have any new scam calls that have come in, so I don't have any of those to go over right now. However, I thought about going back on an old case study credit card shipping scheme. This one happened about a year and a half ago, and it's still going around, and it's important for everybody to understand what the credit card companies are actually doing about it. So I'm going to go over, it's going to be just a quick, uh, simple case study on an actual case, and I'll go into more detail detail. Before I start though, I've been getting quite a few questions um, on the videos that I'm posting, so I wanted to clarify a few things. I record scam calls to show people how they work. I do this out of my own time, the kindness of my own heart, and I'm not doing it as a government employee. I do not work for the government. I actually do this in between cases when I have time. Uh, no, I do not work on identity theft or individual scam cases. I have my own fraud examination firm. I specialize in employee embezzlement and tax violations. I do a lot of partnership fraud cases as well as payroll tax, um, corporate small business tax issues to where the IRS is going after the individual. And I'm usually retained by the attorneys um, to go through the records for the individual who is being targeted. In these cases, are either criminal or civil in nature, so it just depends on the case it, itself. I am also president of a nonprofit organization who is actually the new owner of this channel. They're called Business Fraud Prevention, and Business Fraud Prevention does grant-based internal control services and help for smaller businesses who are victims of occupational fraud more frequently than larger corporations. We also provide free fraud prevention training and internal control training for those smaller organizations, as well as fraud prevention training for the elderly. Uh, we do provide grant services for elderly victims of elder financial abuse. This one actually qualifies more on the occupational fraud side of it because it's more embezzlement where it's either a caregiver or a family member who has gained access through power of attorney to embezzle money. And so no, we do not do cases on individual identity theft or scams, uh, things like that. You need to go to the police department, your local police department, file a complaint with the government agencies online as well. These videos, we're doing them through business fraud prevention now so that we can kind of help in that area to show you what's out there, even though we do not, as far as the services provided, do not have anything to do with it. But if we could train you and show you, then that's going to help as well. So this is a credit card shipping scheme, and the case study involves um, a large charge that was done on a credit card in September 9th of 2021. So one of the things that I want to point out too, because of the fact that I don't do investigations um, for individuals on scams or theft, any case that I do on YouTube, any of these scam calls that I get are coming to either me personally or my family members. And so if I'm investigating a case such as this one, it was a credit card um, for a family member, which actually was my daughter. So her credit card was used for this large purchase and she did not live in the same city as the main card. Um, this credit card was, um, she was added to it while she was in college. And um, so the main card address was my card at my home address, and she was at a different location. So according to the credit card purchase, it was for a company called House. House is an online construction idea remodel website where you can also purchase materials, supplies, or items through House. And the purchase was substantial in nature. Well, her credit card had an a $100 limit notification. So if there was a transaction that was over $100, she should have been notified immediately via email regarding this purchase. So unfortunately, about a week after this uh, charge, it was actually six days after the charge occurred, we logged into the credit card account and saw it in there. And at that time, um, notified the credit card company that a fraudulent transaction was made on her card. The credit card did not send the notification until seven days after the charge was completed. So they failed to send the notification when we had it set up for alerts and warnings. I would love 
to tell you the credit card company name. However, even though everything regarding the, this case and all of the exhibits that you're going to see are factual, I just do not want any problems down the road. So I'm leaving their information out just to avoid any situations. I would gladly go and prove that everything occurred as I'm doing in these uh, exhibits. However, I'm just going to avoid that right now. So here you can see that on Friday, September 17th at um, 2021, they sent a notification that a transaction was posted for $684.35 on 910. So right there, there's seven days past due. And when the credit card company did not um, properly notify, I would have had plenty of time to go after it. I mean, if the notification would have came right away, I would have been able to intercept everything and have it not get to the extent that it, this whole case got to. So what happened was on September 16, we filed a fraud claim with the credit card company and they opened an investigation into the claim. We received a letter notification on September 30th that they credited the account, the amount that was purchased and stated that they were able to identify that it was fraudulent. So we thought, great, this is done and over with. We don't have to deal with it anymore. So on November 15th, just a month and a half later, after logging into the account, I noticed that the charge was put back on the credit card. I contacted the credit card's fraud department and asked them what was going on. And they said that they put the charge back on and claimed that it was actually a valid purchase. They stated that the delivery address was the address in which was on the credit card account. The delivery address for my daughter is in another city within the same state, far away. It's a, a few hours away. And the address on the statement was my address. And so what occurred was whoever made this purchase had the address that was associated to the credit card and they used that as the delivery address. On one hand, I can understand with their investigation if it shows that the purchase was delivered to our house. And I can guarantee with my security camera and footage and everything else and um, nobody signed for it. It was claimed that it was a signed for package and there was no evidence or proof that it was delivered to my house. And unfortunately, this is where most victims will fail in these types of fraud schemes when their credit card is used. You can see in this exhibit number three that they're confirming that the uh, fraud investigation was completed and they've determined that we're not responsible for the activity. So allow 30 days and the credit will go back to the credit card. So then this is exhibit four. It shows that the house purchase was created on September 9th. Now what this transaction shows is that they reposted it on November 15th and put it back on the card. So the original transaction date was on September 9th. So at that time, I contacted the credit card company fraud department and they had claimed that they made this determination by receiving all of the records from house and that the shipping address was the same as my address. Yet the card used was my daughter's card, which I don't have. So I requested those records and they denied to give those to me. And I requested that they reopen the fraud claim because we never received a shipment for this product and they declined. So at that point, I started my own investigation and contacted House, which was incredibly helpful. They were able to answer questions, provide me with information. I had several interviews with managers at House who were very open to communication and assisting me further. So House ended up providing me with the information that they sent to the credit card fraud team. And in that information was the item that was purchased was an expensive chrome faucet, which my daughter would have no reason to purchase a chrome faucet, especially living in student housing. So I also received the tracking information from house on where the shipment was sent, the information regarding the person it was shipped to, etc. What I did uncover was the account was a new account that was recently opened with house and it's like setting up a Facebook account. You set up a new account, you enter your name, you enter your information and the account was only open for a few days. After the uh, scammer made the purchase on the account with our credit card, within 24 hours they logged back into their house account and 
uh, requested a redirect of the shipment. So they changed the shipping address before it actually left the facility. And the email address that was also used to create this house account that did not match my daughter's email address, nor did the name or anything else associated with this account. So after the uh, scammer was able to redirect the shipment and have that changed, they closed the house account completely. So at that point, house was not able to see anything else going on except for the data that they had. What we could confirm was the uh, scammer redirected the shipping to a UPS warehouse located within the same city that I'm in. And they are well aware of how they're doing it. So they have a mule within the city where the credit card statement account is located. That way it looks like the individual actually received the product who has the account with the credit card. But that's not actually what happens. So upon learning this information, I contact the UPS warehouse where they provided additional information to me. The suspect requested a hold at the warehouse so that they can go pick it up. And it was confirmed that the suspect picked up the order on 914 just uh, for five days after they had ordered it on house. It was signed by an individual named Jenkins, which is not my daughter's name, nor is it my name. And the receiver, the shipping receiver of the package's name was Winfield Coachman. Not the victim's name, not my name. And... This is where the credit card company severely failed and was negligent in their fraud investigation. They failed to contact UPS. However, they did receive the information on the shipping information as far as it going to our house with somebody else's name who isn't on our credit card account. So this Winfield Coachman, who we have no idea who it is, the fake name that was used, the credit card company knew this, yet they still determined that it was a legitimate order. And even though it was redirected to a UPS warehouse facility. So after discussing with House once again, their records showed that the purchase was flagged as fraud internally, but it was accidentally missed and shipped out. And so at that point, when the package was shipped and redirected, that information was also provided to the credit card company and they ignored it. So you have a credit card fraud department who has all of this information. They even know that the uh, company house had flagged this as fraud and that the names didn't tie up with the account holder on the credit card they still deemed it was uh, a legitimate purchase. Here is the delivery notification from UPS showing the shipment was sent to the Winfield Coachman. It had my address right there, even though it was my daughter's card in another city. The pickup location, who picked up and signed for it, I do not believe with the evidence and records that I received because I contacted UPS directly for this information that the credit card company contacted UPS at all to get any of this information. They just closed it. They said, well, it went to the same address as on file, ignoring the fact it was redirected. The outcome of this case, based upon the records that I was able to obtain through House, showed that the purchase was already flagged as fraud. It showed that the shipment was redirected. It showed that the account was immediately closed. And it showed that the credit card fraud team received all of this information. What it also showed is House was the one who issued the credit back to my credit card for the fraudulent purchase. The credit card company was 100% negligent in their fraud investigation. Um, I wouldn't even call it a fraud investigation. They did not do their job. And on November 22nd, the credit card company claimed that they refunded the full amount. No, they did not. Howes refunded the full amount. They get no credit for taking claim that they did anything in this investigation. Because of this, I will never use this credit card company again. Um, it was permanently closed. I sent a letter to the credit card company advising them of their negligence and how this was handled and the disappointment that I had in their credit card company. And, you know, big credit card companies who don't care just brush it under the rug anyway. So what can you do if you become a victim of this type of fraud scheme? Depending on your credit card company, 
you need to know if they did a full investigation or not. If you are 100% adamant that you did not get the product, that you have no idea what the charge is for, and the credit card company is saying that you're liable for it because the shipping address matches the account address on file, you need to dig deeper and you need to do a similar investigation. You have every right to contact the vendor and get the records. If your name was used, your credit card was used, then that means that you are the owner of those records with the vendor and they need to provide it to you. What I do know with credit card companies through examinations is that they don't want to give you the information such as this credit card company did not want to forward me any of the information that they received from House. And unfortunately, the only way that you're going to get that from the credit card company is to file a lawsuit and file a subpoena against getting those records or you go to the vendor and you request it through the vendor. Once you have the shipping information you need to go directly to the shipper and ask them for the shipper information as well. Get it in writing. Anything that they have, all of the records that ha they have regarding the shipment of the information on your order, if it's being diverted to a warehouse location, this is a huge huge red flag. If you can prove that you did not receive that product and you can prove that it went to a drop ship location where they could pick it up at a warehouse, fight it. Do not accept this as this is your responsibility to bear. Keep all of the records that you have and redispute the charge with the credit card company. If you don't already have alerts set up with your credit card company on charges over a certain dollar amount, a lot of times if you don't use your card for anything more than $50 or $100, set the limit low. Make sure you either get a text message or you get an email notification. This will prevent this chaos from happening in your life. I'm not trying to put a huge plug in for any credit card companies, but honestly, Capital One has the most amazing fraud prevention tools that I've seen of most credit cards and if you have a Capital One card take advantage of their fraud alerts. I do hope this video has been useful and helpful and in our fight against fraud we do ask that if you could add us to your Amazon Smile profile. Amazon Smile donates 5% to charities of your choice based upon qualified purchases. It doesn't cost you anything but it helps us a great deal to help fight fraud. Thank you again for taking the time to watch this video and I hope to see you guys again soon.